With winter coming to a close here in Canada, and yes, that does happen, it's time to retire the electric snowboard project for the year and talk about what changed and where the project is heading for next winter. We're doing it. <laughs> this electric snowboard project was intended to be a low cost DIY project that anybody can build to contrast the extremely expensive, complex, and prohibitive design alternatives. And the idea, once I have it working, is for me to be able to do winter backpacking trips on it. This entire project is open for anybody to build their own. You can find a complete parts list and a how to build guide in the description. This design started off as a malfunctioning pile of scrap, but after testing and tweaking, oh so much testing and tweaking, it's actually in a usable state now. So let's talk about everything that's changed from the initial design up until now to produce what is, I believe, the world's first DIY electric snowboard project under a thousand dollars. Originally I tried to make the motor mount arms entirely 3D printed, unfortunately that didn't go so well and resulted in me wrecking a $400 motor. That resulted in me having to design the only specialized metal component in this entire build, a 3D printed solid stainless steel reinforcing bracket around the axle which can be ordered off of Shapeways. Everything else is off-the-shelf hardware and 3D printed parts which you can either buy the model kit and print yourself or order a set from me directly. There were a lot of doubters, including myself, that 3D printed mounting arms would not be able to hold up, but surprisingly they're doing really well, even in the cold. I'm not seeing any signs of stressing on the plastic, and I'm 240 pounds so it's not like I'm a twig riding this thing. And they're just run-of-the-mill solid 3D printed ABS. I also had the motor mounting arms seating the wheel way too high in the first version which meant it couldn't gain traction like at all. So I redesigned them to seat the wheel a heck of a lot lower, well below the plane of the board. And with all of my weight on my rear foot, that forces the wheel right into the snow and I actually managed to gain traction. A lot of people have asked why I don't switch to a spring tension system. Remember that this design is meant to be as simple to build as possible. I asked myself, a fair amount in this project, if a given part was absolutely necessary. And when it comes to spring tensioning, the answer is no. The motor mounting arms and the board itself act as the spring, with your rear foot seated as close to the base of the motor mounting arms as possible, acts as the fulcrum. And this has actually been working extremely well. I should note that this in entire design is only meant to work in specific snow conditions. There's no way this wheel can have anywhere near enough surface area to work in pure powder. The wheel scoops need to press against something solid underneath the snow to be able to push you forward. I find that I'm able to get this to work with two inches of snow or less. Anything more than that, you might just be spinning in place. Underneath, you need something denser like densely packed snow, ground, ice, etc. And you also need to give it a bit of a push start or a rocking start to get that first bit of momentum to get it going. And the wheel segments themselves aren't that durable. They're also just run-of-the-mill ABS. A material with better layer bonding like nylon would probably fare a lot better, but for now I found that printing ABS as hot as it'll go has reduced the amount of tread issues. The only other issue I'm having with the wheels is that in warmer conditions, when packing snow is present, it gums up the treads really bad and eventually stops the wheel from being able to turn at all. Other than just straight up not using it in those snow conditions, I'm trimming up the wheel well to be more flush with the base of the motor mounting arms so I can widen the gap a little bit. As for actually standing on the board, I plan played around a lot between traditional snowboard bindings and traction pads. Bindings give you really good steering authority and control over the board, but I find that I can't seat the rear binding far back enough to put enough weight on the wheel. Traction pads give you a free range of motion, but it makes it hard to steer, and eventually the pads get gummed up with snow and I just slide right off. So after going back and forth, I wound up going with the best of both worlds, a hybrid setup with one binding up front, and a redesigned traction pad with a much more aggressive traction spike in the back. And that brings us up to the present day, so what happened? next. Now that most of the major problems are dealt with, it's all about pushing the board farther and farther. See if I can do longer rides without issues like the snow buildup or any breakdowns. I also don't know how it handles having the weight of all my winter backpacking gear added, so I need to test that. I also need to gauge the range of my board with my e-skate batteries. That's a big question mark. I'm definitely aiming to do my first overnight trip with it next winter, and if I feel the reliability has gotten to that point, maybe even a small section of the Trans-Canada Trail. For now though, now that the warmer weather is arriving, I'm switching focus over to the self-driving electric raft project for autonomous raft packing adventures. And if you want to see all the weird EV adventures I get up to, click the card.